Hello and welcome back to Join Dota League Season 3 here on Hefwood TV 1. Right now we're going to have Game 2 of a best of 2 series between Doza Gaming and Moscow 5. As for your casters, I'm Grandis V, and once again I'll be joined by Mike Loris. That game where 1 was so shaky for M5, but uh, ultimately if you do lose your lanes, it doesn't really matter that much because you can recover in the mid game. Like they had so many times where like PGG was caught out of position and Blow Your Brain got caught out of position, which is blown to pieces by a Skywrath Mage ultimate, but even with that shaky start, they managed to pull it all together, and Dooza, I think a lot of that had to come down to their item choices, especially in that OD. Yeah, it just didn't cut the cake. They had a really solid early game advantage, and weren't able to do anything with it. This game, we're going to see a little bit of a deviation as far as the bands are concerned. Death Prophet and Jakira, the first two bands from Dooza Gaming, like and throw faces void taken up by Moscow 5. First pick, Tinker response. Run an H's Profit by DC Gaming, and the next pick for Moscow 5. Yet again, we're going to see a Batrider, probably handled by Tron. His Batrider struggled very early on last game, but towards the end, he had some pretty good initiations, and he split the focus of the fights very well. Yeah, I mean, that's really all you could really ask for your Batrider. The Blink Dagger came up rather late. It was like 11 and a half, 12 minutes or something like that, which is much later than Blink Daggers are usually picked up, but... Hell, once you do get that, you're pretty much online for the Bat Rider. And the burst from Moscow 5, although not the highest, was certainly just enough in order to get the kills where it is needed. Now with the Bat Rider and the Tinker opening, uh, I believe it was Death Prophet instead of Tinker in the uh, first two picks for Moscow 5 in the last game. They will have a good amount of push still, although it's a little bit of a different style of push, mostly in the creep clearing and stuff like that. But mostly just a lot of burst, a lot of initiation. So this time if they get a lasso on someone and Tinker's there, that person is so screwed. More or less, yes. Dooza Gaming, they have a little bit of split push of their own with the Nature's Prophet, but in the war of the split pushers, Tinker wins 9 times out of 10 versus that Nature's Prophet as he counteracts pretty much everything the Nature's Prophet brings to the table. Um, I don't know, Necronomicon can be annoying for the Tinkers, that pure damage can be pretty problematic for him. Um, and Nature's Prophet clearing trees as well as giving vision with spread is pretty useful for catching out the Tinker over at the side, but really, Deuce Gaming don't have the best tools to deal with the Tinker early on. Marana roaming there with an arrow is nice if you can actually get it to land, but they'll need more setup if they want to do that reliably. Yeah, but picking up a Tinker this early will give Deuce Gaming the, their pick of counters. They could go for a Clockwork or a Storm Spirit, or really anything they want in order to try to shut down this Tinker. So Moscow 5, this Tinker, is going to most likely be countered in a little bit of a heavier way. Nature's Prophet's good, but uh, would really like a little bit more than just a Nature's Prophet, because if the Nature's Prophet is under-farmed compared to the Tinker, then Tinker can just turn around with an E-Blade, dagger and just blow him up. Looks like this game, Vengeful Spirit is going to pick up for Duza, which they could have gone for last game, but they already had their two supports. This time, a support VS or a core VS doesn't really matter, as they're going to have something to break the lasso, which was so devastating in the last game. Yeah, it's going to be very useful also, just all around for Duza. On the dire side, Vengeful Spirit, good for the Roshan advantage. As a minus armor as well as plus damage, very useful for taking him down in lane. A pretty good aggressive roamer with a straight up single target disable. Defensively up against the Batrider, it's really good. And then Wave of Terror is good for catching a Tinker out inside the tree line. I think this is just a really good hero all around for Deuza Gaming. I don't really see a downside for this Vengeful Spirit unless they get off to a really slow start. In which case, defensively swapping for a Batrider Lasso is more or less just going to give up the Vengeful Spirit's life. Hey, but if you're saving your Nature's Prophet or something, that's really Vengeful Spirit's job in the game. Yeah. Also, if they uh, want to, they'll have the Vengeful Spirit Marana support roaming duo. A Magic Missile to set up an arrow is pretty good. It uh, could be a lot better, obviously, if you have a Bane or a Shadow Demon or something like that, but it's a capable enough combination, and Vengeful Spirit actually lets Marana put out some pretty decent damage early on, whereas normally she would be 100% in the arrow. She'll be able to contribute a little more with right clicks, as M5, they're going to get more burst for their bas Bat Rider Lasso. Once someone's lassoed, assuming they're not swapped out, the Skyrath Mage Ultimate is going to, to fall, and whoever's caught in there for Duza, again, assuming they don't get swapped out, is most likely just going to die until BKBs are picked up on their cores, but so far, the cores that Reserve. Duza can possibly have, Mirana or Nature Prophet, usually don't get BKB until much later. Yeah, definitely. A lot of pressure is going to be on this Vengeful Spirit to have really solid swaps. Is up against the Scarth Mage and as well as Bat Rider, you have to kind of choose where you're going to uh, swap the hero. If you want them outside of the Mystic Flare, if you want them outside of the Lasso. Four Staff would be wonderful for the Vengeful Spirit this game, but usually as a support sheet, it's not going to be farming incredibly fast. Use the gaming, pick themselves up a Luna, so we're probably going to be seeing a support Mirana Vengeful Spirit as their combination. But this Luna pick is going to give them a lot of aura damage as well as another just pretty solid all-around hero. Luna has definitely fallen out of favor during this patch. 
Um, but it still is going to synergize decently well with what Duza Gaming are bringing to the table. I'm not sure it's enough to really deal with this Tinker, however, coming up from Moscow 5. And Moscow 5 picked themselves up a tree and protector. I have mixed feelings about the tree right now. I don't think that he actually offers that much during the push, um, but he will counteract a lot of the chip damage nature's profit is doing, and most importantly, the early game. Skyroth Mage, as well as Tree and Protector, will be able to do a lot aggressively with Boots first on Tree and Protector, as well as Skyroth Mage, just having an innate large amount of early damage. We'll be able to do some pretty good work at zoning out this nature's profit, as well as keeping the Tinker alive with living armor support. And Doozy Gaming with this Luna pickup, indicating that they want to go for a pretty early push. Luna can go into the late game, but with the aura that she has and Inventional Spirit together, that's a lot of plus damage. And Nature Prophet with the, there you go, even more plus damage. This is full on Cloud9 style, except with no Visage. Drow Rangers, the pickup, I actually really like this for Doozy Gaming. It's always a little bit of a risky hero, especially when you're up against a Tinker and a Bat Rider, but they're going to have so much damage. It's not going to be funny at all for Doozy. And their early game pushing is going to be absolutely devastating. M5, they finish off their lineup with the Troll Warlord, another hero that could go great with the Tree and Protector. But uh, the question is, in this game, can they defend against this onslaught of push from Doozy Gaming? They don't have, like, Exorcism or Serpent Wards or anything like that. They just have everyone who's going to be pretty much good doing double damage, assuming all the auras are leveled up. Probably more than double damage, to be honest, with all of the things that they're bringing to the table. Especially if Ranger is laned in mid, which I'm going to assume is our matchup, Tinker vs. Drill. Um... It's not the best matchup for Drill Ranger, as the laser is going to shut down her CSing pretty effectively early on, although with her long range, Tinker is not going to be able to reliably get that onto her. Um, more than anything, she is just offering that extra damage. Drill Ranger is a hero. She can pop out a lot of damage on her own, but where she really shines is that aura, giving it to the rest of her teammates. And A pick I wasn't expecting. The biggest problem I have with Doozy's lineup right now is they have no way to initiate, with the exception of a Vengeful Spirit Missile into Arrow or just a straight Arrow landing. The... 5-on-5 five five team fights coming up from Doza is going to be very problematic. I mean, as you said in the draft, this is very reminiscent of a C9-style lineup. Um, and how they like playing is just by avoiding fights as much as possible. And Doza need to really do that in order to actually come out on top. Because if they run into a Moscow 5 lineup and they get picked off by a Batrider or a Tinker that has a Dagon laser missile, they're just going to die. So they need to be very good at avoiding the fights and just splitting up the map as much as they can. And also M5, they're uh, a little bit antsy because they actually have a match with, against Alliance in, how long, 40 minutes. So they have to win and, or end the game by then or else they're just going to have to leave, which kind of sucks in, for this scenario. Fortunately for them, Dusa have picked up a lineup that can very quickly win the game or lose the game. Like if Dusa get off to a slow start, then they're pretty much just out of it because though Luna and the uh, Drow are capable of doing some pretty serious damage late game. Once the Batrider jumps in and pulls one, and once the Troll Warlord gets real close to them, those heroes are just going to crumble because they're all glass cannons on the Dooza side. So it's very nice of Dooza to pick up a lineup like this because M5, they're under a little bit of a time crunch. Right. Yeah, it's actually weird to see them draft a lineup like M5 have in a very crunched up time schedule for them. Um, Especially pick him to Tinker. I oh, know, he can get off to a very early start. I think it is more or less Dooza's lineup. It's going to allow them to do that if they can. But that said, let's introduce our teams and our players. On the Radiant side, we are going to have Moscow 5 with Tron. Playing in the Batrider, our mid hero is going to be Tinker, played by Nexus. Right now, we're actually going to have Vigos on the tree, Protector. And, well, the other support's going to be Scarf Mage, played by PGG. And that will leave our safe lane farming troll handled by Blow Your Brain. And on the Dooza side, we got playing the Luna going towards bottom. Limbo on her. Unstable is going to be playing the Mirana as Iceberg's following up with the Jar Ranger. Already used the Precision Aura, which was completely wasted, and it's a pretty long cooldown, so pretty big mistake there. Legion's up on top as the Nature Prophet, and where is Captain Love's Ventral Spirit? There he is, follow keeping up the rear as they are looking for a little bit of aggression. Again, the damage that they could put out is huge, and they're going to catch PGG. Magic Missile to open up, arrow to fly, and this is going to be the first blood. Who's going to pick it up? It's going to be the Drow Ranger. Pretty ideal for Dooza, as they get a very easy kill. The damage is certainly there. It's uh, 50 plus 19 on everyone, except for 22 on the Drow. That's an outrageous amount of plus damage at level 1. It really is. That's dirty, and it's not getting any better for... Uh, Moscow 5, as this game progresses and Drill Ranger picks up more agility and gets her ultimate online with more points up into that aura, 
it's going to be ridiculous. They might find the tree. Oh no, his turn it is going to be picked up and he also is going to be avoided by the arrow. But even just like three auto attacks, they're already going to chunk down the tree and protect him and force him through his tangos. All right, so key items I would like to see for Dusa, a very quick ring of Aquila from the Luna. And really, uh, Vlad's I would also like to see at some point in this game, just go all in on the auras so that no matter what M5, if they focus down one hero, they'll have to deal with everyone else because everyone's putting out a whole bunch of damage. Of course, you know, for Luna as well as Drow Ranger, staying alive is going to be tough, so they might want to you know, go a little bit towards BKB or something like that, but... For the early part of this game, the damage advantage is going to be huge for Dusa, and even though they're facing up against a Treant and a Batrider who can end up doing a lot of physical right-click damage, once the Ventral Spirit gets her aura on top of all these other auras, then it'll just be so terrifying for M5. The chip damage from this Luna or the Ventral Spirit and just landing a Magic Missile could probably result in a kill. Yeah, more or less. It's very volatile. We are going to be looking at Marana potentially looking for an arrow angle. It's the Nature's Prophet. It takes a lot of damage in bottom lane just being zoned up by the Skyrath, but the arrow... It is going to be thrown out, it is going to land on anything, it is going to land squarely onto that range creep, and there's not going to be any follow-up for that. In fact, Limbo might get gone on here with four stacks as well as the <coughs> Leech Seed going away, now five stacks on the Limbo, I think Limbo is just going to straight up die to Tron chasing him down, she salves up, that's not going to save you, six stacks, one more auto attack is all that Tron needs, he might die to this tower, he's going to Firefly and go to the south, I think he's going to find no magic missile mana for the Vengeful Spirit, and Tron Please. will come away and kill Richer, and well, he'll die to the neutral, so well played by the Batrider. Thought for sure that Murano was going to get that kill. Yeah. The Captain Love Ventral Spirit went really deep onto the Trium Protector, but Trium Protector has an outrageous amount of strength. And killing him off as a Ventral Spirit, even though your damage may be jacked up by quite a bit, is going to be difficult. So it's a very nice kill going the way of M5. And they lose the Batrider to neutrals, which I think at that situation is probably the best thing that they could hope for. Unstable was going to cut, cut, cut off that Batrider. And, uh, well, just suiciding instead is going to be pretty nice for the M5 side. They take a one kill, uh, they tie up the kill score ultimately after that kind of wonky first blood is Captain Love being chased down by Treant with boots. This is what you get when you have a boot Treant. Is Captain Love going to turn this around with the Magic Missile Legions here as well though? It doesn't have a Sprout. Vigos going to try to Leech Seed out but I don't think he's going to make it. Uh, the right click will land before that Healing Ball and Treant Protector will go down a little bit too aggressively going after that self support. Yeah, it's very easy for a Treant Protector to get carried away with that extra damage as well as the boots. It's very easy. If that's a solo eventual spirit, it would have been a pretty easy kill for him. But with the support coming out from the Nature's Prophet, who currently is just straight up jungling for Dusa, it will be fine. Top Limbo going to get Leech Seated once again. Three stacks of tar on him. Vigos going to get tagged with an arrow, but uh, it's going to be Tron that you really have to worry about as far as doing the damage. It's once again going to be Luna going down, which really shouldn't be happening. These supports are just not there when the Luna actually needs their supports to be there. And she's just being very easily picked off by the M5 duo. Yeah. It's very weird to see this actually happen, but then again, these supports do very little defensively um, for the Luna. Even if Unstable and the Vengeful Spirit were there, um, they can at best hope to get the extra leap movement speed and a magic missile. It's not enough to save Limbo in most circumstances. Really the only lane that's going well for Dusa here is the mid matchup for Iceberg. 16 and 14 compared to 6 and 0 on Nexus. I would say that that's a dominated lane coming out from Dusa. The bottom lane is just a straight up jungling nature's profit for them as he's abandoned that. Giving Troll pretty much the time of his life, but top as well as bottom are going well for Moscow 5. Yeah, and of course bottom is going to be a pretty free win because it's a be zero lane. Nature's Prophet is jungling up. I think this is okay because against a Skyrath Mage and a Troll, there's not really that much you could do. You can mess with the Creep Equilibrium a little bit, but Captain Love's going to find Vigos once again. Magic Missile is going to open things up. There is an arrow available off to the left, but Dooz is going to teleport in their Legion Treant and or their Nature's Prophet, and they will get the kill on the Treant after a long range arrow from Unstable. The damage they're putting out is really, really scary. M5, they're going to need a whole lot of armor or get a whole lot of pickoffs if they want to be able to stand up against this because with the auras now coming up level two on the luna should be level three on the drow with the marksmanship and three wraith bands yeah this is uh, all in on that marksmanship aura even the vs has one point in the vengeance so i have yet to see them all group up and so we could actually take a full tally but luna's right now sitting at plus 62 that's crazy yeah, and Vengeful Spirit doubling her damage as well. It, it is ridiculous. There's not much else to put onto it. I love the Draw Ranger build. There's no reason not to go for it, I think. Um, I think the game plan for Moscow 5 in these team fights is jump on the Draw with the Batrider, and if you're able to get a Blink Dagger initiation onto her, taking her out is the majority of Deuce's damage right now. Um, the Luna is probably your secondary target, but I think they can pick apart the uh, 
line up from Duza fairly easily once they get this blink online for the Batrider. Um, and Tron, not looking too far away from it. At 1600 gold, he's going to have it a lot faster than we saw in game number one. On the bottom lane, Blur Brain and PGG have pushed down the tier one tower using the uh, Troll Ultimate Battle Trance in order to bring that down. And Duza having no heroes there, obviously not mounting any sort of defense. It's going to be a nice kick of gold for M5 because, as you said before, Blink Dagger is coming up pretty swiftly. Tinker is pretty far away from oh, top lane, Tree and Protector. It's going to be brought down. I guess that was just a Magic Missile and Burst damage. It is really scary with Minus Armor. Iceberg in the mid lane going to fight against Nexus. Laser's not going to come out. In fact, the Silence was just in time, and then the Drow Ranger damage is going to kill off the Tinker. I was going to say he was a little bit far away from his Blizzard Travels, and now he's even further away. Iceberg completely dominating this lane with a perfectly timed Gust. Yeah. We are going to see the triple Null Talisman, or rather double right now for Legion, build um, on our Nature's Prophet, so a lot of just very cost-effective fighting items now for Duza. As Draw Ranger go, go on to our own mid with the Troll Whirler, they should have plenty of damage to get Iceberg. The arrow comes through, not going to land on anything, and even if it did, PGG would have picked that up with one more auto-attack anyway. That's a very crucial kill on your Draw Ranger, who right now is dominating the lane. It's not going to slow it down that much, but... They should be able to put some decent damage on this tier 1 tower with the battle trance as well as the troll and Tinker right clicking it. There's going to be three heroes assembling up on top. They will lose the mid lane tower while this is happening it looks like. Captain Love, not with that much mana, but he does have stick charges. Mid lane not being pushed that hard, uh, at least not as hard as I really would have thought. And there is a Mirana in the area. Drow might want to teleport into this with the Mirana to help. Yes, they will. Wrath of Nature going to bounce through, and the, instantly the Gush should be there from Iceberg. Will silence, blow your brain. He'll try to go for the tower, and he might be successful in doing so, but it'll be at the cost of his own life at the very least. Nexus can try to run off to the side, blow your brain. Living Armor is not going to save him. He's going to get picked off, and now they're going to chase for Nexus. One nice Frost Arrow, and now Nexus is uh, going to try to put as much damage onto these heroes before he goes down, but Iceberg is going to get this kill pretty easily. Roshan is going to contribute a little bit more, opening the door for potential a Roshan deny, pseudo deny, I guess. Nexus, though, is pretty screwed. The last hits is going to go to the Nature's Prophet. Ultimately, the score ends at 9 to 3. I guess that was a uh, 8 to 3 because of a Batrider deny on neutrals, but still, Duza, their lineup is working pretty well. And if you can't shut down these heroes in the early stage, then they're going to run over you in the mid game. Yeah, they are. Iceberg. Despite giving up that one kill is 2 on 2 oh, they are going to go up top for the Luna, and they'll blow up Luna. Luna, the hero that's really taken the brunt of the aggression coming out from Moscow 5, and, well, that's your Blink Dagger on your Batrider, first usage of that one. They'll get the Soaring on the Tinker, and he just doesn't have any contingency plan, he doesn't have any stacks, and he's going to lose his tier 1 tower mid as well to the Drill Ranger. So there's just nothing for this Tinker really to be found on this map. He does have some stacks over to the large camp, and actually a quite a hefty stack at that. Let's see, one, two, three, four, at least, potentially five. He'll be able to farm these up unless they give it to Tron. I think that's a little bit of a mistake if they do. Looks like they're just going to try for a double stack. Into the Roshan oh. pit, the does go. Yeah, I love it. Let's see how fast this Roshan goes down. They have... So much damage here, and they don't even have the Vengeful Spirit or uh, or minus armor. This is going to be a very quick Roshan, although Tron is in the area with the Blink Dagger and Firefly, and he will deploy that right now, so he can't technically steal this. Although he's going to make his presence known, he's going to be gusted up, and Roshan's still dropping. They have to focus this and cluster around it. Wrath of Nature will fly the through. Cards to stack up, and the Aegis will be picked up by Luna. Now the Eclipse is going to burn down the tree. Tron up on the high ground will survive for now, but here comes Blow Your Brain. Will instantly pop the Aegis, and then get the follow-up kill on the Nature Prophet. Iceberg did slip out of there, but he will get hit with some Whirling Axes, and then he's going to try to run away with the TP. He'll be successful in doing so. Missile's going to miss, in fact, as they are going to curve outwards. Limbo going to try to fight against Blow Your Brain with Captain Love. Arrow going to fly through the sides. Will connect on the Troll Warlord. This is going to give them all the time in the world to very slowly bring him down. Missed chance being a little bit of a pain, but ultimately Duza, they get the Aegis, lose a couple of heroes, but I think come out on top, and now they're going to slide down to the bottom lane. PGG is very weak. If he gets caught out by the Ventral Spirit or Mirana or both, then he's just screwed, but I think the bottom lane push is what Duza are going to be aiming to do. Yeah, I think so as well. Despite getting the last hit on the Roshan, which was nice coming up from Vigas, he was invis up inside the Roshan pit uh, because of an invis rune, not because of his nature disguise. Not something you usually expect. Um, potentially could have been avoided if Duza just dropped a sentry ward. Um, better safe than sorry, I suppose. But this tier 1 tower down in bottom does not stand a chance. They have the nature is call, I'm not even sure if that was necessary. Just too much right click coming up from the tiers, but they are going to go on to the Luna. No! It's going to be missed. The Scarf Mage Ultimate is going to land on 2, as well as the Troll Axe is going to land on a 2 on top of that. They're going to lose their eventual spirit 
Spirit. She actually gets the um, Magic Missile onto Blur Brain. Surviving one more Arcane, but will do her in as they lasso up Limbo. Limbo going to be pulled towards the side. Limbo with another Lucent Beam. They're going to drop the Troll Warlord, or will they? Troll's actually going to survive with Living Armor Support. Luna still surviving throughout all of this. Very surprisingly, everybody's so darn low. Now they're going to turn a Tron. Tron Arrow. They will be able to get that kill. The Troll. This could be a pretty easy triple kill for him. The Ron Ultimate's going to come out. He can't get on the Limbo. No detection onto the ground. Now the Ron, they're going to turn on with the Lucent Beam. Killing spree for Limbo. And two for three the trade. They don't get the tier one tower, but this should be pretty easy for them to take um, very shortly. Do as I said before, very much so glass cannons, and up on top, Iceberg will take down a tower pretty much by himself. Scarath Mage is going to teleport in, but instantly gets gusted. One, two, well, he loses this is the marksmanship bonus, and the silence isn't going to cancel the TP. Draw Ranger, unable to get the kill onto PGG, but at least he doesn't die, he gets the tower. Duza, as long as they keep kiting like that, then they're going to be in for great times, because, again, they don't really have any heroes that are capable of just standing and fighting. They don't have a Centaur or a Tidehunter or anything like that. They're all just so very soft, so they have to play the cooldown game, they have to play the stun and run game. As Vigos up on top, I don't really know why he's up here at that much HP, but it's a very easy kill for Captain Love up on the top lane. Yeah, Tinker, he's actually made quite a valiant comeback after um, farming up those two stacks. He now has the Boots of Travels as well as the Sol Ring at 11 minutes. This is actually your standard timing for Tinker, despite him dying twice and not being involved in a single kill. Um, so I'll say that Nexus is doing a pretty good job, and Moscow 5 by no means are out of this game, um, although they've lost the last couple of team fights. In fact, I think they're going to be pretty happy with how this game is going. Um, now that they do have the Blink Dagger and all um, the workings of Force Staff on their Batrider, I'm not sure if Duza are actually going to be able to get enough out of this early advantage that they made for themselves. 7-16, to 16, it looks really good on paper, but actually the gold advantage is not that... Um, Impressive, 1,500 in their favor and experience only 1,000. Most of this is due to the disparity in the sports. Scarth, Mage, and Tree and Protector have very little to nothing, but their cores are pretty balanced. Yeah, Troll Warlord being a pretty large factor for M5 right now. He's gone for the mech build on the Troll, and then between that and Living Armor, he's able to get right in the face of the Drow Ranger and really anyone, just force them back. There's no way a Luna can duel up against the Troll. The Jar Ranger will be able to gust him back and then maybe bring him down, but if she gets too close to the Troll and she loses her marksmanship bonus, and then she's pretty much just food. If this Troll is alive, then they're just buying so much space for M5 as Duza, they're going to look towards the top lane to possibly make an initiation. Limbo does have an Eclipse, although there are quite a few creeps here. Legion's going to circle around with a Sprout. Do they have any True Sight? They do on the H prop. This is going to be the very easy kill on the Tree and Protector as Tron up to the side. Has Firefly active, though he doesn't have a blink available just yet. Uh, it's going to be another nice pick off for Duza, but I think they need a little bit more than that. Because Tron is going to look to kill Limbo solo. You have to respect the potential for Eclipse, and also the Mirana's coming around from the side. They will Moonlight Shadow, and it looks like there's no true sight here just yet for M5. So Limbo will go to the south and try to meet up with his allies. They get the arrow, as well as the Eclipse and the Blurry Brain. That's a very easy kill on the Troll Warlord. Not even enough time for a, a mech, and now Nexus will be spotted out by Captain Love. One Magic Missile, two Auto Attacks, and she gets the kill. Uh, it kills all over the map for Duza, but can they actually translate these kills into anything? Captain Love's going to run to PGG, and Iceberg is going to open up with a Gust. Stun to follow up, and then just two right clicks apiece. Scarath Mage is going to get obliterated, giving Captain Love a double kill. And now Legion on the bottom lane, he's going to go for this push. This should be a Tier 1 tower at the very least. They could even go for two, I think. Yeah, it's kind of a cheesy lineup coming up from Duza, I'd say. They've been able to... Uh get away with it so far and now they're getting very close to a BKB completed on your Drill Ranger with the two major components as well as 900 gold on top. They have a Drums on their Vengeful Spirit just buying a lot of very cost effective auras um, as well as very impactful items. So the BKB on the Drill Ranger, mm, it's going to help them avoid the Skyrath Mage damage as well as the Tinker uh, through his missiles as well as his laser. But then again the March Machines is still going to thread through Iceberg. It's it's okay. I might have just preferred a straight-up blink coming out from Iceberg. Tinker's going to jump down bottom. They can't fight Marching Machines if he drops that down. That's one of Deuce's biggest problems. I don't think they'll be able to actually get high ground at a decent enough time for themselves um, before the Tinker gets really huge. But then again, they can just wait it out And if they have everybody on their team super farmed. In a six-slotted versus six-slotted battle, Deuce are going to win most of the time. Captain Love is going to be running straight into Vigos. He's showing that he can put out a lot of damage. And one Magic Missile, the auto attacks from this VS are insane. There's the overgrowth, but I don't think Vigos is going to escape. One more auto attack won't quite do it. As Captain Love getting initiated upon by PGG, but the damage from PGG just isn't there. This Vengeful Spirit's doing so much damage. He will get ultimately brought down by the Tinker Missile and Legion now. Trapped up by the Lasso, but 
Tron will get hit with an arrow, unstable. Let's see how much damage he can put out. One, two, not just enough, because Blurry Brain is here with the mech. Now he's going to go to town onto this Piranha. Where's the leap? It's there, but he's going to leap into the trees. Tron's going to follow him with the flame break. They will get that kill. Iceberg has been on the bottom lane, and Limbo up on top in the meantime, taking down a tier 2 tower, but really M5, they uh, make some good value out of that troll, and crucially get the Blink Dagger now up on the Tinker. Suddenly, this split pushing damage from the Dooza side, even though it is intense, is going to be really hard to put together because of that uh, Tinker pickup. Yeah, it really is. Tinker is on a great path for his items at this point in the game. It's all that he can really ask for. It's unfortunate that the troll doesn't have anything on top of just his phase mech as well as Aquila, but it's enough to keep him inside the fights, and yeah, despite having a gold as well as experience lead for Dooza, it just doesn't feel like it's enough at this point in the game. 10-21, to 21, the kill score might say otherwise, but they have a lot of towers and they're just not able to do anything with it right now. Yeah, the Drow Ranger, I think, is pretty much where she should be, but... The Luna, not really. I mean, she does have a BKB of her own, so Eclipse is going to be really nice, but really it's the initiation power for M5 and their ability to easily burst down the Dooza heroes that make BKB just a little bit worse. Like, it's very plausible that M5 get the jump on someone and kill them off before the BKB can't even pop get popped off. And then at that point, it's just a dead item. So, Dooza, they're going to have to take these fights very cautiously, and if things go poorly, like in mid lane, where Iceberg does get the BKB off and does get the Gust onto the Batrider, the Lasso is not going to come up in time in order to cancel the TP, so it's a nice escape from the Drow, but that's their 10-second BKB charge. The fights are just so fragile for Dooza. They are. I'm not even sure if they can take them. They just need to split the map as best they can. They can do that pretty effectively, but it's... They, they can't take a fight, actually. Let's see, they're wrapping around on the Batrider. Limbo just on Tron's tail. Who's caught who? The BKB comes out from Limbo. He's not going to be able to get the Eclipse off. And now the Overworld canceling out. Even with the BKB, he just can't go anywhere. Legion, he's popping the Blade Mail and taking a lot of damage from the Marching Machines. The Flame Break and one more Arcane Bolt. It's not going to be enough to do him in. All they need is a little bit more damage. They don't have it, however. One more from Tron would have been enough, but he didn't want to give his position because of this. He's caught between too many enemy heroes. He gets an Aegis buff before falling, but he will fall. Now Blur Brain swap going on to him. They don't have the Magic Missile just yet. It's still coming out of cooldown. They're not able to lock down this troll. Now with the living army is pretty darn tanky. Still has a mechanism arrow going to fly wide. And now they're going to eat <clears throat> the uh, blast coming out from the dark troll summoner. They get a sprout onto Blurry Brain. Blurry Brain trying to TP out. It won't be enough because he has too much damage going his way. Two kills going the way of Dooza. But the Tinker is inbound. They can't fight inside this march and I don't think they'll be able to go for much more. They might be able to push down this tier two but even then one or two layers of march should be enough to dissuade the push entirely. Yeah and Dooza showing how they could fight if they Again, play that run and gun game. Don't get too close to the troll at any given point and use their BKBs in order to just passively pressure M5 back. Like, M5, they were definitely capable of just fighting in the, within the BKBs, but uh, it's sometimes just scary to do. And they were forced back just a little bit, which gave a little bit more space towards Dooza. And really, their spacing in the fights are going to be probably their most valuable resource. Like, gold is important, experience is great, but if they take a fight where they're all, all five heroes just dancing around the M5 side, that's going to be the best fight that they could possibly ask for. And if they have an Aegis on top of that, well, then that's just amazing. Let's see how much total damage we have going right now. There's the minus armor from the Vengeful Spirit. And putting all these auras together, it looks like it's going to be... Uh, let's see, who has little to... There we go. Plus 70 from the Vengeful Spirit. That's crazy. That is absolutely it's... crazy. Relic for everyone. It, it really is. It's literally like a global double damage. They bring down Unstable with the Amplified Damage. You drop the Scarf Mage Ulti, and PGG still surviving throughout all of this. They're going to last them up. Iceberg pulling back in the rest of the team. They're just trying to man fight this. Buyback on the Marana. They're going to be able to get the tree, in, as well as the Tinker, with those... <clears throat> excuse me. Blow your brain. Man fighting up against these two. He's going to throw the axes towards Limbo. Limbo being focused down. The right clicks are going to be enough. That's going to be... Two for one, or two for two plus the buyback. I'm not sure where this fight is actually going to continue breaking out. Roshan's casually standing at the front of the pit. Actually, Dooza didn't get any kills in that because both the Trant and the Tinker got killed oh. by Mud Golems. I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah. My goodness, how? <laughs> Mud That's... Golems are strong, man. They're magic immune and they don't give a shit about anybody. That was, that was awesome. They were running away at like one HP. The Luna's Glaives. We're bouncing between them, so like they were both dropping low at about the same rate, and they were both at one hit left, and then the Mud Golems just come out and smack each of them, and they were just dead. It was, it was great. It's ultimately going to be a Roshan for Dooza, as their Drow Ranger does pick that one up. But uh, they got a whole big fight there, and ultimately they couldn't actually kill anybody, which kind of sucks for them. Yeah, it really does. Stinker now has the Dagon, and 
This is scary. I think pretty much every hero on the side of Duza is a one combo hero. Um, with the exception of the people with BKBs. Vengeful Spirit's decently tanky with drums as well as Ogre Club, and it'll take probably two to burst her down, but pretty much nobody's immune from that, especially if you have a Scarth Mage Silence on top of it. We have a double damage onto Iceberg. He's hitting like a truck, 400 a pop, casually at 20 minutes in. Um, but yeah, they're not able to use this to get any towers or any kills uh, for his true ranger. It's just going to be sitting pretty uselessly. Unless Vigos continues to stay up here, he has a blink and might be able to get out to safety. Mm. If Jarranger gets one attack, it's all over and, well, blink away, he'll be fine. Right, now Jarranger going to put some pressure up on that top lane, whereas Limbo with the Glaives and the Auras going to be putting some pressure down on bottom. M5, they're going to mobilize up on top lane. Boyer Brain going to go for his BKB, which is going to help not that much, actually. The Magic Missile is a pain, as is the Arrow, but really it's the physical damage you have to be worried about. So I think Armor or Ghost Scepters would, Ghost Scepters would probably be the best by far. They're going to look towards top lane. Tron going to run to Iceberg. There is... Well, enough true sights and Iceberg is revealed and silenced. Is there a gem? Yeah, gem on the Bat Rider, so they will know about that one now. Moonlight Shadow, not going to be doing too much. However, they will be wrapping around from the bottom as well. Limbo and Unstable going to run straight to Blow Your Brain. Can these two heroes kill off a troll without the uh, BKB? I think they can if they catch him within the Eclipse. But now here comes Tron with the combination for bursting down Limbo. That's a very easy kill on the Luna. Nexus going to teleport in and Dagon Blast to take him out. Now Blow Your Brain going to get forced forward, but Iceberg is here. Not with double damage rune anymore, but he's standing and fighting. Lost the marksmanship bonus. Now he's going to get permanent bash down. This is going to be the Aegis down. Legion can't attack within this. However, he does have the blade mail up. Arrow going to fly wide as Captain Love does come through the side. Where is everyone else? I feel like dudes are just not fighting with enough heroes. Iceberg's going to get permanent bash down again. Vigos is there with one big punch, going to crush the Chow Ranger. And now Captain Love off to the top. He's going to be bursted down as well. Dooza. They take a nice and clustered fight, but unfortunately that's not what they were really meant to do. They want that fight to be as spread out as possible, and the Jaw Ranger just lost her marksmanship bonus way too early on in the fight. Couldn't really do much. That's going to be a 4 for 1 in favor of M5. Now they're going to go down the mid lane even more. Blow Your Brain has Battle Trance, though he's holding on to it for now. This is going to be a free tier 2 tower and maybe even a little bit more. Yeah, with them holding on to Battle Trance, they might look for some chip onto the tier 3 tower, and with the troll on your team, that chip is... More than just a little bit of damage. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of them holding back on the uh, Battle Trance. It doesn't matter because there's too many heroes dead to actually have a contest, but if they're not going to go for high ground, I don't see reason not to use it. Is It's like, what, 30% uptime? Um, a little bit less than that. Well, they're going to smoke up and wait for someone from Dooza to foolishly walk up this hill. It may very well be Limbo. Although they could just go for Limbo regardless. There's no Ventral Spirit in the area to swap him out. And this is going to be the death of the Luna once again. No BKB active and that's the really soft Luna. Going to get brought down very easily. Iceberg in the front lines. Might lose his damage and he will right off the bat as PGG does get really close. Now the Overgrowth onto two. They can't attack. Captain Love's going to get bashed down by the Troll. Now they're trying to focus down the Drow Ranger who wants some space. Tron's going to drop pretty low as he does go into the Ghost form. And suddenly there's nothing more that Dooza can do about this. Blow your brain right back in the front lines with the BKB down though. Can't really afford to keep fighting, although Nexus has a blink dag, and if he wants to go in on this one, he's going to just put more pressure on the wave. Dooza, they once again lose two heroes. Pick off the Skyrath Mage, which is great and everything, but in exchange for two, now their high ground is in trouble. Battle Trance is going to be up once again, and I think this is going to be a very dead tier 3 tower. Mm, with the 5 seconds delayed on the tower, as well as 15 and 15 on the Vengeful Spirit and Luna, I don't think they'll lose much more. But yeah, this tier 3 tower should fall. Um, in theory, especially with the marches being consistently dropped down. Iceberg, he can't walk up to this. He drops that in a half. He'll be able to get Vigos, however, but he can't stand there. The Tinker's inbound doesn't have enough mana to really go for anything else. Their tier 3 tower is actually going to stand, surprisingly enough. Well, they hold their tier 3 tower, but Dooza, really their fights showing how delicate they truly are. If they, if they get swapped in or if anyone gets close enough to the Drow, not only the Drow loses all that damage, but pretty much everyone else on her team loses a lot of damage as well. And suddenly they just can't fight anymore. They're going to go in for Captain Love. Mystic Flare combination with the Lasso, showing once again how powerful that is. As Venture Spirit is going to be just food for this combination. PGG might be sprouted upon or teleported by the Nature's Prophet, but it looks like they're both going to slip away. I think they just keep going for this M5. Just constantly lay this aggression down. Yeah, because if they force a 5v5 engagement, there's nothing that Diza can actually do. Um... They're really good at picking off single target heroes, or single heroes, when they have like three versus one, easy for them. They can just focus them down with the vast amount of damage that they have. But if they get picked apart at all, if there's an overgrowth on like two or three heroes, Batrider blinking on onto one, pulling him back in, there's nothing that they can actually do. Especially if the Ventral Spirit's the one that's pulled back, and honestly, I think she's 
probably the easiest target to start the initiations with the Batrider off onto. She's contributing a lot of damage to these uh, fights as well. Down in bottom, they might find Legion out. They do have the gem on the Batrider, and they will find him. He's man fighting pretty effectively up against Tron, but now with the troll inbound, not going to be able to get out of there. Dominating Spirit for Tron as he picks that up with the Flame Break. And uh, they still are healthy enough that they keep going for this one. Batrider off to the right, it will get spotted out, but he won't get his Blink Dagger cancelled. Limbo on the front lines has to be very careful. Vigos has a Blink Dagger and Overgrowth, this could catch three. He's a little bit too slow over there, he jumps in. He's gonna get the Leech Seed instead as Blurry Brain gets tagged with an arrow. Now the spacing from Dooza, perfect as they get the Silence down for the Blurry Brain, but the BKB is there, Overgrowth onto four, and now the damage from Nexus is gonna flow through. Blurry Brain in the middle of everything, he's gonna focus down whoever he can before he goes down, but he will in fact go down. Iceberg now with the lasso, he's gonna lose all his damage, he's gonna go down next. Then it's gonna be unstable, GG's the call from Dooza. I gotta say, I really liked the Dooza lineup. I thought that it was a nice breath of fresh air, but ultimately it's just a little bit too fragile. M5, they played pretty well around it. Yeah, I, I think you're right as far as saying that it's a fresher breath there. It's a nice draft to see, but your execution has to be so good with that lineup. And their itemization, although it wasn't bad, it gave them a lot of damage. I think they honestly needed Blink Taggers on a lot of those heroes so that they could consistently be in position. The BKBs did very little up against Moscow 5's lineup, with Overgrowth as well as Batrider Lasso to go through that, as well as the Marching Machines, they just died so quickly, even with BKBs on. Um, so that is going to round out the series, two games towards Moscow 5, they're going to go towards a game up against Alliance very shortly after this, so lucky enough for them, Duzo was kind enough to call GG out fairly early on, although it probably wouldn't have taken much more for Moscow 5 to take out that win. Um, Either way, thanks for watching. That is going to be it for now, but we do have another series coming up at, I believe, 22 CET. Um, I can't remember actually who's playing, so let me go ahead and check that one out now. Um, but we are here at Hefwa TV. If you do like the casting, you can follow us on Hefwa TV on Twitter and Facebook. And as for me and Mike Loris individually, Mike Loris and Grandis V on Twitter is where you can find us. Um, but more often than not, you're going to see us here on Hefwa TV. But as for the game that is coming up very shortly, it is going to be... Not today versus Boreal. There we go. Um, so that is going to be a 22 in about, let's see. One hour. One hour. Okay, so I'll probably leave the stream online. Um, so if you want to just stick around, you can. Thanks for watching, and GG Bull Teams.